but in the transport lab. In this lab, we're going to learn uh, three different experiments. The first one is diffusion experiment. We put the dye on the argon. The argon is like water. Argon is 99% is water. And argon slows down the movement of the dye. So we use two different kinds of dye. First one, potassium permanganate. It's a red, orange color, potassium permanganate. And the second one is methanium blue. And the methanium blue, the molecular weight is twice more than potassium permanganate. And when we put on the argon, they're going to diffuse out. And we wait to see which one going to diffuse out faster. And the experiment is going to look like this. So we found the potassium permanganate through time they diffuse out much faster than the methanium blue because the methanium blue molecular weight is much heavier. So this experiment shows you factor effect diffusions, several factors, molecular weight, distance, concentration gradient, temperature all effect, all effect diffusion. So turn out molecular weight, the lighter one can diffuse faster. And that's the potassium permanganate. It's gonna diffuse much faster than the methanium blue. And the distance diffusion works pretty well for short distance. So if you increase the distance, you compromise diffusion. And the second one, concentration gradient. The molecule naturally go from high concentration area to the low concentration area. Like both of the dye, they will diffuse out from high to low concentration area. And the temperature increase diffusion. So these are the factor effect diffusion. And the second experiment, you can actually do it uh, at home. The egg osmosis experiment. The osmosis, there's a water diffusion. So water will move to make the cell swell and shrink. And in your body, the cells are pretty small. And the biggest cells you can find, that's, that's an egg. Egg is a cell. So how do you make the raw egg grow? Well, you put them into the hypotonic solution. And to do the experiment, first you need to put the egg into the vinegar for about three days to remove the shell. So the vinegar will eat out the shell. And after three days, you can put the, the egg into a hypotonic solution like pure water. So if you put the egg into the pure water compared with uh, the put the egg into the hypertonic solution, what happens is you found the water keep moving in to dilute the egg. So turn out the egg gonna swell. So is that because the hypotonic solution make the cell swell. And if you put the egg into a hypertonic solution like a corn syrup, it's turn out the cells gonna lose water. So the cell shrink. So this experiment, you can do it at home. This teach you hypotonic solution, make the cell swell. And hypertonic solution, make the cell shrink. Our third experiment, this time we use red blood cell. And we don't use human's brain, we use the sheep's brain. And the experiment is tell you, okay, we know the hypotonic solution make the cell shrink, but does every solid can create hypotonic? The answer is no. So this experiment will tell you what solid and can create a hypotonic solution. And we use uh, molarity. And this, this part teach you how to calculate molarity. So transfer the percentage weight into the molarity and eventually into osmolarity. So that's a different way to represent the concentration. And to make the cell swell and shrink, we talk about tonicity. So it turned out not all solute contribute to tonicity. Only the non-penetrating one will contribute to tonicity. Because tonicity is make the cell uh, swell or shrink. It's based on water movement. So only the non-penetrating one can contribute. So in the class, we talk about isotonic solution. Well, the cell will be very happy. It's hypotonic solutions make the cell swell. And the reason the cells swell is because water move in. Water move in and the cells swell. And why the water need to move in? It's because water want to move in to dilute the solid inside. 
So it turned out it's a non-penetrating solute contribute. So in this experiment, we use two different kinds of solute. We use sucrose, and the second one we use urea, and see what happened to the red blood cell. If you put red blood cell into a 500 mOSM sucrose solution, and what happens is we know the water inside will go out to dilute the sucrose. And what happens is the cell shrink. So you turn on the cell shrink. But if you put cell into a 500 mL urea, urea is a penetrating particle. So this molecule can move through the cell. In this case, actually water won't move out to dilute the urea because urea is penetrating. Urea just moves through the cell membrane. Every molecule wants to move from high to low. So what happens is urea will move from outside to the cell inside. So water does not have to move out. And urea move inside, you bring water inside. So turn out this one is water keep moving in until the cell swell and burst. We got hemolysis. hemolysis. So the third experiment tell you, after you do the experiment, you found the one with sucrose, it still look like blood. And the one you put into the urea, and the blood become uh, hemolyzed, become very clear as a hemolyzed. And the reason is because the penetrating particle is a hypotonic. So we prepared the two solutions, we prepared the concentrations, and we measure them through time. We found the sucrose solution still remains like blood. And the urea one, after about uh, 30 seconds, it becomes clear. So this tells you only penetrating solute can move into the red blood cell. And if red blood cell into, put into the isotonic solution, the cell volume will stay the same. If the red blood cell play in the hypotonic solution, and the cell gonna swell because the, the water move in. If the red blood cell put into the hypertonic solution and the cell volume will decrease because the cell shrink, water move out to dilute the solute. So the last one, very important one for the third experiment. What you learned, the tonicity. How do we decide is a hypertonic, isotonic, hypotonic solution? It's not just the concentration of the molecule, it's actually we need to have non-penetrating solid because only non-penetrating solid like the sucrose will make the water move. If it's penetrating particle like urea, it turns out the water won't move. So you prepare the urea solution, it's still a hypotonic solution and the cell will still hemolyzed.